For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. Salvation is wrought of God and by God alone. The love of God is that of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You are not going to get to heaven by your good works. For the Bible says there is none that doeth good. No, not one. You are not going to get to heaven by religion for Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The wages of sin is death. And yet the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures it is worthy to be preached upon the housetops it is enjoyable of the lord to preach in the concourse it is worthy to lift up your voice within the city limits to proclaim that jesus saved it is worthy and righteous to proclaim that your religion can't save you. Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can you be saved. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Salvation is not by church attendance. Church is great for growing in the Lord. But it's not to get you into heaven. Baptism is a public testimony of I have received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. But baptism is not going to wash you into heaven. Money and gifts and charity are a wonderful thing. But you cannot buy yourself into heaven. You enter to heaven by the way that is proclaimed by God, and that way is the Lord Jesus Christ. Your faith and your belief. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Your faith. Your belief. I'm nothing more but the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the testimony upon Calvary's tree. It is great that you know the baby born in the manger of Bethlehem. But that is not salvation. Salvation is in the finished work of what God has finished, not in the manger. Upon the cross of Calvary, Gagatha, the place of the skull, where that virgin-born child of the tribe of Judah, God manifested in the flesh, suffered and died, that we might have life. God in the flesh. God in the flesh. If Jesus Christ is not God, you're not saved. Not only did God manifest himself in the flesh, but that was God in the flesh. 100% sinless man, 100% God in one body. 
33 and a half years old, went to Calvary's Hill and suffered and died for mankind. Because we're sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let me read you the account of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I turn to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, the suffering servant, God in the flesh. What happened to God that he might purchase us through his blood? Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who has believed our report? I have. April 21st, 1987. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To you today, this Saturday, in January, 2019, you are hearing about the testimony of the biblical Jesus without the baloney. Now I'll tell you what the baloney is. It's religion. Whether it be Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, if it's not the gospel, it is baloney. And baloney is made with parts you don't even want to know what they're made of. God does not take baloney. It's not kosher. But Jesus Christ, 100% kosher of the tribe of Judah, of Jacob, of Isaac, of Abraham. There's no byproducts in the salvation of God. It is the pure blood of God, Acts 20:28, 20, with nothing added. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. Jesus Christ, if he lived today, would not be pictured on a magazine cover. He would not have a sports card with his name and statistics on the back. He would not be a trading card. He would not be a poster on a Christian children's bedroom wall. When you were to look at Jesus Christ, you would see a Jewish man. A Jewish man the brown skin. A Jewish man that was small. Little stature. His face. His face would not be lovely or beautiful. It would not be handsome. You would not recognize him. He is not that Gentile that's pictured amongst religions today. Because he's not Italian, he's Jewish. And the pictures of Jesus today would have him as Italian. And we know what church comes from Italianly where you will suffer for all eternity in a place called hell. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. The masses of people that came to Jesus wasn't so they can get a photograph. No one ever painted the picture of Jesus they came for food, and they came for lessons from the Bible. And they came to watch him die. He is despised and rejected of men, including Daytona Beach, Florida. Men 
many of you have despised and have rejected the biblical Jesus that is preached and being preached. You do not want to have anything to do with the God of the Bible. You are, you are annoyed that somebody would dare to stand with an open Bible and in your words, to yell at you. And yet the preaching, lift up your voice like a trumpet and proclaim to my people their iniquity. God approves of preaching the gospel. A man of sorrows. If you are in sorrow and in grief, of anxiety and depression, you can relate to Jesus Christ instead of medication. God manifested in the flesh was a man of sorrow. He did not have a big crowd. He didn't have a glass pulpit. Twelve men. And only one of those men witnessed his crucifixion. Acquainted with grief. With your troubles and your problems you are facing in this world. There is a God seated in heaven right now. Has gone through what you have gone through. Job has asked, has no eyes like a man? Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, can rightfully say, yes, I have. Jesus wept. He ate. He fasted. He slept. He got angry. He preached. More on hell than heaven. What? And he suffered and died that we might have life. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Daytona Beach, 2019. You do not want to face Jesus. You wish Jesus will pack up and go home. Better to face Jesus now on your knees as a sinner than facing Jesus at the great white throne judgment as a sinner. Come to Jesus face to face as a sinner willing to repent of your sins. Or you will face Jesus face to face and be judged as a sinner and to be cast off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. He was despised. He is despised today. Look at yourself in a mirror as you will not turn to the God of the Bible. And in the mirror, point yourself out and say, I am a despiser of Jesus Christ. 
be honest. I got religion. You still despise Jesus. Because the biblical Jesus Christ is not religion. The biblical Jesus Christ is to be taken by faith. And yet the Bible records your despising him. You have made the Bible true in your rejection of Jesus Christ. Where are the masses of people? They go to hell. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And straight is the gate that leadeth to life. Surely he has borne our grief. And you will be held accountable for what Jesus Christ has done for you, whether you be Catholic or Baptist, that will not save you. Catholic is not the answer to salvation. I was once Catholic. I was lost and going to hell. Catholics have killed Christians. There is no hope in the Pope. You don't take Jesus orally, you take him by faith. Religions despise Jesus Christ. The one that has bore our grief. He suffered and died according to the scriptures. And if you will not receive that part of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are lost and going to hell. There is no purgatory. He carried our sorrows. He is able and he's willing for you to come to him on God's terms and not yours. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. God beat the hell out of Jesus that we may not go to hell. Jesus Christ went into hell and deposited our sins that there might be eternal life. And without eternal life, you will perish. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Our transgressions against God has put the wounds in Jesus Christ. The nail prints in his hands, and in his feet, and in his side, upon his brow, are because, the Bible says, our transgressions. It is you that put Jesus on the cross. Sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Why did Jesus go to the cross? Because of you and me. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. Part of the gospel is he suffered and died according to the scriptures as I read Isaiah 53. Your iniquities has put upon Jesus the cat of nine, the whips, the beatings, the punching, the pulling of his beard, because he was sinless and I laid in iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Do you want godly peace? Godly peace is a fruit of the Spirit that has come by the suffering of Jesus Christ according to the Scriptures. The world will give you temporal peace. Health care reform is taking that away. There is something so much better than insurance in the government. It is in the Lord Jesus Christ in His suffering in his beating. That Jesus that you have nailed to the cross is not an exact representation of the suffering servant. The Bible says he was so marred and so bruised that his back is described as a farmer out tilling the ground. The furrows were deep. The face was beaten beyond recognizing him as human. Don't fear zombies coming from the grave. Fear Jesus Christ coming from the Father. For He is coming. And He will not be that little baby in the manger. The Bible describes Him as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And He's not going to be a little pussycat that you can pet. His teeth are going to be drooling with wrath. With wrath because you are the sinner. You have had the iniquity of Isaiah 53. You caused Jesus to suffer and die. And you have thumbed your nose, stuck up your middle finger, and griped and complained at the same God that's offering you life. And with his stripes, we are healed. Stripes. Whipping. You are whips. And Jesus was whipped. No human man of any sort can suffer as Jesus Christ has suffered. And Jesus Christ suffered for our sins, for our iniquities for our transgressions. That little lie, whatever that lie may be, caused Jesus to be beaten. That theft, stealing, caused 
Jesus to be beaten. Not respecting and honoring your parents. Cause the nails to go into his hands. Taking the name of the Lord in vain has caused that wound in his side by the spear. Coveting. Oh, I want fresh vegetables. I want the best fruit. Put Jesus Christ on the cross. That's coveting. Want, lust, and desire is coveting. And Jesus Christ suffered and died. Because you want something. You desire something. You've got a lust for something. Lying, stealing, vain use of God's name, not putting God first in your life, that's the first commandment. You cannot keep the first commandment. It's impossible, even for me. Isaiah 53. All we like sheep have gone astray from our birth. In the nature of Adam, we are sinners. We all have them sins that we do and we don't do. But the ones that you do do, has put God on the cross. Love English language. What you have done to offend God. I run people. What have you done to offend God? Has nailed God to the cross. And if you will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will face the wrath of God. Because you have, you have believed that the work of the gospel in vain. You have thought religion. You have thought baptism. You have thought being good. You have thought there is no God. You have thought anything but the gospel of God. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the means of God's salvation. There are no Baptists, there are no Catholics, there are no Lutheranians, there are no religions in heaven. Only those who have been purchased by the blood of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way. There's no other way. The truth, the others must be alive, and the life, there is no life outside the gospel. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Those are the words of Jesus. They are not my words. And when Jesus says, He is the way, 
Don't you dare try to come to God in another way. Isaiah 53. We have turned everyone to his own way. <laughs> what way would you turn against God? God, look at what I did and not what Jesus has done. God, you put how good I am with the scale of how great Jesus is. And you'll come up wanting. You'll come up as a loss when God will weigh you against Jesus Christ, the righteous, the holy. And you be unholy and unrighteous. What other ways can men go against Jesus Christ? The way, the way of atheism. All is well, there is no hell, great is no God. And yet the Bible proclaims there is a hell and there is a God. And you will stand amazed when you stand before the God that you have not believed in. You'll be at a loss of words as the atheist will stand before the God, the Creator. You can try education. What will education do for you? Education has changed over the years. But the Word of God has not. Education will get you smart. But if you do not know God, the Bible says you are a fool. Salvation rests upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no other but Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. When Jesus Christ on the cross cried out, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabectii, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that point, the iniquity of mankind was placed upon Jesus as the heavens went dark. And Jesus Christ suffered and died on that cross for our iniquity. And you're going to hope that something else will wash away your iniquity. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon them. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, lake of fire. That's worse than hell. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a Catholic. I've been baptized. You will wish you had some of that water in hell. Isaiah 53. He 
he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Americans get oppressed and get afflicted. Uh, uh, I'm offended. Get me to the doctor. Pharmacist, give me another pill. He said something that offended me. <laughs> Need help? Shut him up. Get rid of it. And yet, Jesus, Isaiah 53, he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Never before Pilate did Jesus say, I got rights. Call the ACLU. He didn't call down one legion of angels, never mind twelve. Jesus Christ stood before Pilate knowing when and how he was going to die. And if he, you want a love message, Jesus Christ went to that cross for God so loved the world that he gave, according to Isaiah 53, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all my days when there will be no more days. Because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. Isaiah 53. There is nothing more you can do or add. You're going to match yourself what I am reading about Jesus in Isaiah 53. You will be at fault. You will be at loss. You will be cast from the presence of God. All eternity in the lake of fire. Because you can't match what Jesus has done. There is nothing equal to God. There is no comparison to the works of God. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, Jesus will say. I never knew you. And you will go off into the lake of fire, nameless, for all eternity. There is no name given to Christ's rejectors. Isaiah 53. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? I am. Right now, 2019. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. My mouth is proclaiming salvation, and that salvation is in Jesus Christ. And only Jesus Christ. I am relying and depending upon what I preach, Jesus Christ. I may be classified as a Baptist, but that ain't going to save me. And don't get offended at ain't, I love that word. You got to put that back in the dictionary. I just, you know, someone just got offended because I said ain't. If you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God ain't going to take you to heaven. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. They put him on a cross. You ever ask yourself why you see Jesus on the cross? Because you are the sinner. You are the transgressor. 
You are the reason that Jesus died. Never mind Jesus is the reason for the season. You are the reason why Jesus suffered and died on that cross. You put him on that cross. Because you're a sinner. You're lying, you're stealing, you're coveting, you're lusting. Put him on the cross. And don't dare come to me and say, I've never done that. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Isaiah 53. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. The suffering according to the scriptures of Jesus Christ is because of us. Look at yourself in a mirror. You are the reason for Jesus Christ. The baby born in the manger that suffered and died and was buried and arose again the third day because of you, the sinner. Because of me, the sinner. If we were not sinners, there would be no birth in Bethlehem. There would be no cross on Calvary. If we were no longer, never were sinners, there would be no reason for preaching the gospel. If Adam had not sinned, there would be no police, no hospitals. But all have sinned. Dishonesty is a sin. And it's a great practice in the business world. Your dishonesty put Jesus on the cross. Isaiah 53. He made his grave with the wicked. He died on a cross with a thief to the left and a thief to the right. At least one of them thieves admitted to his thiefism. Another word needs to go in the dictionary. One of them thieves that afternoon said, Jesus, I want to be in your kingdom. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. There was no religion, there was no church, there was no baptism, there was no giving money. And that dying thief believed on Jesus that suffered and was suffering and died in his presence. And that dying thief that repented and got right is in heaven today without religion. Without baptism. Without joining a church. And he was prophesied in the Bible. So when I say that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures, two thieves dying with him are in Isaiah 53. And we learn that one of them thieves got right with God without your religion. You know what religion was when that dying thief got saved? Let him call down God and God save him. Be fivefold from. The religions were sitting down having a lunch watching God die on that cross. Religion will start to proclaim against killing Christians.
They killed the Christian of all Christians, Jesus Christ. Religion kills, Jesus gives life. Religion is man-made, Jesus Christ is God approved. And God will not approve of your religion. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Wait a minute. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was beaten that you may turn from your religion to be saved. He was bruised that you may have eternal life from your education. He suffered and died that you might come out of science. Religion, science, Education is fiction. And Jesus Christ is the true. Getting into heaven is like a question of true and false. I was a Catholic, false. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Well, we were made by evolution. False. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Look at all the charities I gave to you. False. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Look at me, put my fingers in my ears so I don't listen. False. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Look how good I am. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. False, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. God, yes. Jesus Christ in his finished work upon that cross. He came out of that tomb three days and three nights. And that was all according to the scriptures. You manifested in the flesh, your blood, God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy. Big difference. Big difference. Isaiah 53. Because he had done no violence. Neither any deceit in his mouth. He was completely sinless what we are not. The Lamb of God without spot. The precious blood of Jesus Christ, without spot. Sinless perfection. And they gave him a cross. Imagine what God will do to you as a sinner when you reject Jesus Christ. He'll give you a lake of fire. And all our mouths are filthy. Every idle word, the Bible says, we shall give an account. Every idle word. Those stupid words. Yeah, you stupid today. God's going to judge. Those idle jokes, those idle words that meant nothing, God's going to judge. And don't forget your thoughts. Oh! Our thought life will stand before God. You're a good witness. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, you don't have to murder somebody to be a murderer. You just have to think about it. Oh, I'm going to kill that guy, murderer. Oh, how the bubble, look at that woman over there. Lust. Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her. Come on, man. <laughs> That's the charge of all men since Adam. I never committed adultery. Yes, you have. You thought about it. Pornography is adultery in the Bible. We have 
have sinned. Jesus never sinned, but bared our sins upon that cross, according to scriptures. Don't believe in Jesus today, you'll meet Jesus tomorrow. I mean, time ahead. The preaching of the Bible will come real when you stand before the one that's brought. Preach. Add that one to the book. Dictionary. You may not believe Jesus today, but tomorrow you'll believe in Him. Hopefully, you'll believe Him in salvation and not condemnation. Isaiah 53. And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Jesus, check out my 1040 on the line of gifts and charity. Check out what I did on that cross. Jesus, look how good I am. Uh, the Bible says there's none good. No, not one. God, I was righteous. There's none righteous. No, not one. It was a pleasure. Just think about it. It was a pleasure that Jesus became the sin offering for our souls. Give him a couple more whips on that back. Pull some more hair out of that face. Oh, no, not just the left hand. Nail the right hand, too. Don't forget the feet. Because if anybody is going to be a payment for sin, I'm going to beat the crap out of them. I'm going to drive the hell out of them. And he did that through Jesus Christ. And you have the nerve to reject what Jesus done for you. And when you're going to go in your own merit, you're going to go in the wrath of God that bides forever. There is no love when you reject Jesus Christ. There is the wrath of God. There is the condemnation of God. John chapter 3. King James. Don't get messed up in some worldly garbage Bible. Make sure it's King James. Glory to God in the highest. Never glory to man. Isaiah 53. He shall see his seed. That's me. I and those who have believed on Jesus Christ are the sons of God through Jesus Christ. I am a child of God by Jesus Christ alone. I'm a saint and I'm not dead. You don't have to be dead to be a saint. Revelation chapter 1 says Christians are priests. We just don't wear our tags backwards. We don't call ourselves fathers or nuns. By the way, nun is a name of a man who is the father of Joshua. It has nothing to do with women, according to the Bible. I'm going to preach Jesus Christ and I'm going to kick science. I'm going to kick religion. I'm going to kick education. Because they are not the way. 
They are not the truth. They are not the life. But Jesus Christ is. I will quote to you from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53. See where I was. Hold on. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It is the pleasure of the Lord to give eternal life to people that believe on Jesus Christ. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's what the Bible says. Don't you dare say, oh, that man said this, that man said that, that preacher. No, you, you say what the Bible said. If I went in the spirit of man, I may have an 800 number in front of my face right now. That's the spirit of man. But the spirit of God, Jesus Christ, is to preach Jesus. God approved. Everything today came out of Isaiah 53, John 3, Acts chapter 4 in other places in the Bible. You are not okay without Jesus Christ. And you've got to be forewarned. Because the Apostle Paul tells us, the Corinthian church, there's another Jesus. Your Jesus may be getting you to hell. If it's not the biblical Jesus. Your Jesus might be wearing the disguise. Check your Jesus with the Bible. Because there are plenty of Jesuses out there. But there's one Jesus that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, that's God, but by me. That's Jesus. Silence and rejecting go hand in hand. You can't ignore Jesus away. You can't do mass to get away. You cannot come with a scientific formula to avoid God. You cannot wish God away. You cannot do to be saved. There is no doing to be right with God except believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ on the one hand and it's hell on the other. That's it. You know, judge not least ye be judged. And you are judging Jesus Christ by what you're doing. Big mistake. You are so much better than God. Really? 
It's impossible. And yet the Bible says the creation has tried to turn the Creator into a God. Wood, marble, stone, plastic, wood, stone. How are you going to image God in Jesus when you don't even know what He looks like? And then you turn around, the Bible says you're not to have an image or idol of God, whether you call it a statue or an aid of worship. It's still the violation of the Word of God. God is not made in China or the United States or Taiwan or wherever you got that God. God is not made of a palm leaf. And God is not a concoction of your own mind. You're crazy. You are crazy to think of a God likened to who you want as a God. And to reject Jesus Christ is the ultimate sin that will get you into hell. Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Your basketball star makes who cares in eternity? That guy hits the ball. Who cares in eternity? This guy has made a scientific who cares in eternity. Eternity cares about what Jesus Christ has done. When we get to heaven, there will be worship of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. It will be glory to His name, not our name. And the Bible says we will get a new name. A new name and glory. In the Lamb's Book of Life. Reservations. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Religion did not die on the cross. Science was not put in the tomb. And education did not come out of that tomb three days and three nights. Hey, relax. Your religion will change in a few years. What your religion believed 10, 20 years ago, they're not believing today. There were religions that thought the black person was the devil. But I can't believe that today. Science and education has to change the textbooks every three or four or five years. Science wouldn't believe that the earth was flat. I guess they had to change that. They're not even believing evolution anymore. But I, the God of all gods, the God of creator, the God that suffered and died on that cross, he's still saving. He's still alive. The Holy Bible is still the Holy Bible. Even though they, Satan's trying to change that. The same Jesus that walked the streets of Jerusalem is the same Jesus that will save your soul in Daytona Beach. Today. Make today the day that you will be born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. 
Your first birth doesn't get you into heaven. Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born again. Bible. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You got a sin condition. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sin kills. Jesus saves. There is no righteousness outside the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are not okay. You will stand before the Jesus that suffered and died according to the scriptures. Stand as a believer, not as a rejecter. The blessed hope is Jesus Christ. And the unblessed dope is anybody that will not believe Jesus Christ. The Bible calls you a fool and will call you a fool when you will not put your faith upon Jesus. If you are a Jehovah Witness, I call you a fool. Psalm says the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And you proclaim and you know, you say Jesus is not God. You're a fool. God manifested in the flesh. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You throw things that perish away. If you reject Jesus Christ, God will throw you into the incinerator. It's called hell. You can be tossed out by God by rejecting Jesus Christ. Yeah, you. Every week you hear. Every week you've heard. Every week the gospel's been presented to you. Why will you remain in your foolishness? Isaiah 1 says, come now. You may not have it tomorrow. You may not have it this afternoon. You may never see tonight. Death is coming.
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is not Mary. That name is not Buddha. The name is the name above all names. Jesus Christ. God manifested in the flesh. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Blessed be the name at Calvary. It's all about Jesus. And when it comes to salvation, it's all about Jesus. Tire curb today. Everybody hitting their tires on the curb. <laughs> 